Oh. And because you didn't get her a podium? I'm telling you. Every, she's been here twice, and Kim Jeffries didn't get a podium. Either. I'm telling you. Okay. Okay. Ready, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's logged on or whatever. Mm -hmm. Today's date, the 19th. It's been a day. So oh, I apologize in advance. It's, it's been a day. It's okay. I literally, oh, no, it's, it's been a long day. When she starts yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Tuesday, January 19th regular business meeting of the Board of Education. Please rise for the pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one Okay, welcome everybody. Happy New Year. I need a motion to move dockets 0 197 through 0 200. So moved. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, reports of committees. We have no Board of Education report. Um, PTA, PTSA, and SEPTA. I do have Ms. Mumindy's, um SEPTA report, so I'm going to try to read through the highlight. Um, SEPTA's next fundraiser will be, or what? Try again. SEPTA's next fundraiser will be Autism Awareness Masks. We would love to see many students and staff wearing them in the month of April. Information will be going home soon. And SEPTA's next meeting will be March 10th. It will be a Zoom meeting as are most of them these days. Um, PTA or PTSA, do we have anybody on? Michelle Thomas, are you on or? Um, it's hard. Um, this is Maki here. I don't know if, if Michelle's there, if that's okay. Uh, we have nothing really to report, just that uh, we have our next PTA meeting next Monday, January 26th at 7 p.m. And that will be um, uh, via Zoom or whatever. We'll send the link out. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, that's the 25th? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'll apologize in advance. I have a Nassau Suffolk School Board Executive meeting that night, so I will not be in attendance, but Mrs. Shinsato will be there. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, and PTSA, do we have anybody from PTSA on? Yes, I'm here. I'm on Merle. Somewhere. I oh, there I am. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have nothing to report. We have a meeting scheduled for the February. I'm actually not sure of the date. I'm sorry, but um, I don't really have anything. I think it's the 8th. Okay, February 8th, and we will send out a meeting code for that as well. And um, I hope everybody had a good winter break. And um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Albert, you're up. So our student representative is Albert Bow. He's the co-president of the student council. Yes, hello. So for the class 2021, flyers from Justin's to order graduation cap and gowns were mailed home to all senior students on Monday. If you did not receive one, extra copies are available on the counter in the main office. All orders will be done by mail this year. Please call the high school main office for more information. And for the STEM and National Honor Society, peer tutoring in all subjects, including AP subjects, are available for high school students in grades 9 to 12. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I was muted the whole time. Okay, let me, let me read it again. So for the class of 2021, flyers from Justin's to order graduation cap and gowns were mailed home to all senior students on Monday. If you did not receive one, extra copies are available on the counter in the main office. All orders will be done by mail this year. Please call the high school main office for more information. And for the STEM and National Honor Society, peer tutoring in all subjects, including AP subjects, are available for high school students in the grade 9 to 12. Thank you very much, Albert. You can go ahead and study now. I'll see you Friday. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Raymond, your report. Good evening. Thank you. Happy New Year, everyone. As we close in on the end of, of the semester, 
It's time to give pause and recognize the work the staff of the West Tennessee Increased School District has been accomplished. Custodian facilities team continue to improve upon the, uh, the bond work. Spaces have been updated in the secondary plan to provide staff to meet, plan, create reports, etc. These spaces are also being utilized to meet with students. Our clerical staff, which includes our nurses, show they were in pride by ensuring students and staff are cared for during this pandemic. Whether they are supporting contact tracing, ensuring students are in the correct cohort, et cetera, we appreciate all that they do. Daily. Our teachers, aides, and monitors are doing the important work of learning daily. I've heard a lot about the word perfect, and it's been used frequently. Um, and this seems to be done in the sense of being nervous. Uh, there's no such thing as perfect. As we all know, we can chase perfection. Uh, I can say unequivocally, though, that our staff is putting their best forward, foot forward on a daily basis. Thank you to our security team at Summit for helping keeping our students safe, to Whitson's for supplying food, and our district council for ensuring we are following all pertinent changes during this most unique time. Thank you. Our administration has been busy leading and learning as well. They present to the board, as uh, Mr. Bronski Mesador, our director of humanities, is about to do in a moment. They learn side by side with staff and faculty, department, and grade level meetings. As well, they meet to plan budgets, which will ensure the future success of students and staff. Administration is an essential part of the RAM fame puzzle. But we do know the CPI number is approximately 1.3. Uh, but other than that, we do not have a lot of details with regards to the budget, so hope to hear more within the next week or so from Governor Cuomo. Uh, as you are now aware, the January Regents has been canceled. We've taken this opportunity, headed up by Ms. Riley, to provide more meaningful learning opportunities to our project-based learning work. Uh, we look forward to hearing and seeing about the progress our students are making. As you can see, it takes a team to accomplish our goals and deliverables. This past week uh, saw a team of research students led by Mr. Sal Trupia, uh, where they became semi-finalists in the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow competition. The students were tasked with developing a STEM solution that direct addresses local issues. For their project, the students developed a special breathable mask made from recyclable material. Because of their efforts, the students won $15,000 for uh, the district and a Samsung Galaxy Note 20. In addition, they are eligible for the chance to become finalists and win another $65,000, which then well. The students are Glenda Garcia, Gloria Guerriere, her twin sister, Victoria Guerriere, Tinash Hamariel, Alicia Maria, and Stephen Perot. We were going to honor them at the next uh, Board of Ed meeting, which is February 8th, I do. On behalf of everyone mentioned, I thank you for the opportunity to serve the students in our West Ham State. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Mr. Mazador, yes. I believe that brings us to you and your presentation on the humanities department. And I just want to point out, Mr. Kanjemi, they didn't bring you a podium. <laughs> Michelle did. <laughs> That's okay. Michelle, you get one. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Thank you for this opportunity to speak and present to the board and update to provide an update of the vision and the work that the humanities department is doing each and every day. I cannot stress enough the pride that I personally have as director and appreciation I have for the teachers that make up the department. For without their commitment, passion, and love for our students, none of the work that I will be presenting this evening would be possible. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank, to thank my team for their zeal and dedication in preparing our students for success. The humanities department, as you know, is comprised of five disciplines. I always tell my team, we are five disciplines, but one department. I like to use the example of the fist. We come together, we work hard together, we're able to move anything as long as we work and strive for the same purpose and goal. It is with that that I would first like to provide your attention to our vision. As we move together and look at our vision, it is first and foremost dedicated to enlighten our students about the world around them. 
to instill in them the ability to think creatively, work collaboratively, communicate effectively, and become critical thinkers who aren't afraid to ask probing and difficult questions to solve problems. To accomplish this vision, all of the courses within the humanities department are guided by four main principles. One, the first principle is to prepare our students for success in the 21st century. The second principle is to encourage our students to face and grapple with complex issues that may arise throughout their lifetimes. Third, to promote and develop critical thinkers, problem solvers, be able to reflect and work collaboratively. And fourth, to prepare them to live in a society as empathetic citizens, to be lifelong learners and have the, develop, to have the ability to have developed the skills to be successful in the 21st century. When, we, when I say the 21st century, it comes down to four key skills, critical thinking, collaboration, creativity, and communication. These are the core competencies that students need to thrive in the world that they're living in today and the world that they're going to be living in tomorrow. To create and develop 21st century learners, the department has aligned our instruction to next-gen learning standards. We have infused the project-based learning instructional model into our instructional practice. We developed and expanded our library system and platforms. We offer a diverse array of courses that create and develop 21st century learners. The next-gen learning standards are defined as the knowledge, skills, and understanding that individuals can demonstrate over time due to instruction and learning experiences. Though COVID-19 has delayed New York State's implementation of the next-gen learning standards, our department has already begun to review and align its instructional practices within the next-gen standards on a daily basis. To align with the next-gen learning standards expectations of combining instruction and learning experiences, the department has invested time and resources to infuse PDL within the department's instructional practices. So in the 21st century, the way education has changed, teachers are no longer expected to just provide students with knowledge in terms of giving them the content. Educators must also work to provide students with the opportunity to develop that knowledge through hands-on learning and actual providing with learning experiences. We believe that project-based learning is designed to do both of this, which is why we've invested our time in this instructional um, approach. Project-based learning is a method in which students learn by actively engaging in the real world and personally meaningful projects. It, can, it coincides with John Dewey's philosophy of learning by doing. But the best way for students to learn is to actually participate in the learning process. On October 16th of 2019, for your support, our humanities team began a three-day professional development series from the Bucks Institute, the gold standard of project-based learning. It was very exciting three days, I can tell you. The teachers got a lot out of it. PBL requires critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, and communication to answer what's called a driving question. As a result of answering this driving question, they will create a high quality work where the students need to do much more than just remember the instruction. We need to actually use higher order thinking skills in order to learn and work as a team. So again, I really want you all to conceive of this as a working through the prism of making sure that they're prepared to meet those 21st century skills, which is why we invest so much time into this process. To support the students' work, our students to support our students' access to information and research, we have integrated our library automation system with Google the platform that um, throughout the district the students are using. Students can also visually browse nonfiction titles, and we're using Sora and JLG Digital to develop and grow our ebook and audio book platforms for all the learning that's being done now through technology and digital learning. We are currently in our second year of our AP Capstone program, where the emphasis is on research and academic rigor. Through the AP Capstone program, 
The first year, the students take what's called the AP seminar. The second year is AP research. Students that successfully complete their AP seminar and research and decide to stop at this point and take um, you know, their regular coursework, they'll be given, they will, they will be given a, a certificate of distinction for having completed AP seminar research of the AP capstone. For students who move beyond um, AP research after their second year and successfully complete four AP exams and, re and receive at least a, a score of three, they will graduate with an AP capstone diploma. Our Syracuse University Project Advance, or SUPA, as we finally call it. So this, this is a college credit bearing course where our students discover the elements of persuasive speech. They build a solid understanding of the fundamental fundamentals of public speaking. Again, the idea behind this program, this class, is to prepare the students for wherever life may take them. In the world that we live, as we all see, presentation is one of the key components of success, and we want to make sure that our students are prepared for that. We are very proud of the addition and development of our Spanish for Native Speakers course. This course is designed to strengthen and further develop the native language skills and cultural appreciation of our native Spanish speakers. The New York, Seal, New York State Seal of Bioliteracy is something that we really thought about. And in considering the global, the global world that our students are going into in the 21st century, and providing them with the ability to stand out in, in a competitive job market, the department offers our graduates who are proficient in one or more languages, in addition to English, with the New York State Seal of Biliteracy. Over the past two years, West Hempstead High School has been able to bestow this seal on eight of our graduates. We are looking to double this number over the next two years by building a pathway through our Spanish for Native Speakers courses, which I have which I had addressed earlier. We are also proud of the many advanced placement courses that we have. In English, we have our AP Literature and Language, and AP Language and Social Studies. We have AP U.S. History, AP World History, AP U.S. Government. In our World Languages, we have AP Spanish Language. And of course, we have our AP Capstone Seminar and Research. Besides preparing our students academically, we really take pride in the fact that it's also important to prepare our students emotionally as well. For the past year and a half, the Humanities Department through its English Division has partnered with the Pupil Personnel Services, or PPS mental health staff, to create ELA lessons that focus on the social emotional core competencies, for example, compassion, decision making, et cetera. These lessons allow our students to study characters from both a literary and a social emotional lens while making text to self and text to world connections. This is really a successful program that, that we had started. It really allowed the students to go deeper into their character understanding of their characters that they've been reading from the lens of social emotional connections. It's allowed them to also make text to self development in terms of understanding their own issues that they may have to read to see how the characters interact with other characters or the content that the characters are involved in through the plot. And it's really given the teachers an opportunity to work collaboratively together and show the students the importance of this collaborative work that they're also going to be participating, that they also participate in through their PBO projects. And again, consistent language of collaboration is one of the key skills that we have to have. In the past two years, the humanities department has added the, the seven following elective courses. We have a personal business law. We have African American history, sociology and cultural diversity, literature and philosophy, which is an exploration of the self, identity, and purpose. And of course, we are we've uh, started our Spanish for Native. We have level one, two, and three. When we think about the assessments that apply to our humanities department. Our ELA regions have maintained a pass rate of about 91% over the past three years. Our U.S. history regions has maintained a pass rate of 89% over the past three years. Um, the teachers are currently preparing our students for success um, for the new U.S. history framework exam, which has yet to be administered. Um, 
It was supposed to have started last June in 2020, but because of COVID, those exams were canceled. But again, our teachers are still pushing forward and consistently preparing our students for this new framework. And currently, we have a 77% pass rate on the New York State Global Regents new framework exam, which was first administered on June 2018. This next slide I'm really proud of because it really speaks to the tenacity, the determination of our students and our staff. In light of the COVID-19 epidemic where the College Board revised their AP exams and our society and the community dealt with the global pandemic, changes to our instructional practices and methodology, and social unrest, 57% of our students were still able to score between a 3 and a 5 on their AP exams for 2019-2020 school year. This is something that I'm very proud of. It shows the resiliency of our team, of our students. So in closing, the Humanities Department, through its course offerings and instructional practices, will prepare our students for the 21st century. We're going to support and develop the skills that they need to grapple with whatever complex issues they are presented with. We want to promote and develop their skills in reading, writing, reflection, critical thinking, problem solving, and collaboration. We want to prepare our students to become successful, productive members of society who can appreciate others, experience empathy, and become lifelong learners. A, a process and a vision that will benefit West Hempstead as our students grow and become the next generation of the city. Well, it's time to thank our, if there are any questions from the board. Thank you very much. Very nice thank presentation. Um, does anyone from the board have any questions? No questions, just to applaud you. I can't imagine how difficult it is to still teach um, to different goals and objectives, given the fact that our students, between the hybrid, between the remote, what they must be going through personally, and that you are connecting that social emotional piece, which is so important. So thank you. Uh, I, have, I have two questions, actually. Just one to con to um, just confirm, sealed by literacy. So if a child did four years of, of language and was proficient in that language, that child is then going to get that sealed by literacy? Is so there's a process whereby we have a sealed by literacy committee. <laughs> what happens is a student must meet a threshold of three points by the state. Um, those points are varied. So for example, if they scored an 80 on their ELA regents, um, we didn't have the nicest lab, but they scored a uh, proficiency to commanding on their nicest lab. They get a point. The final two points comes from a, a presentation where the student presents in their home language, which oftentimes would be English, and the new acquired language, which, which can be either Italian or Spanish. They have to do a presentation to the Seal of Bioliteracy Committee, which is made up of myself, our world language teacher, our English language arts teacher, uh, English new language teacher. Um, the, administer, uh, 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 and, um, the director of ENL and the, um, Mr. Um, Dita Maso in the high school as well. So once they do their presentations, we are we have um, a state rubric that we utilize to judge their presentations for both language, and then thereby, if they meet those standards, then they will be um, presented with the seal of Gotcha. And um, number two, because actually I should have asked Mr. Kanjemi the same question back then was. Um, I know uh, we're all very happy with the project based learning, but had, being that we're replacing right now because the state has canceled the regions and so there's no ch generic midterms, they're doing PBLs for most of their midterms. Um, do you find, just your own personal opinion, do you find that you think they're doing better? Like, do you, do you think it's better to have them doing it as a PBL versus taking some standardized exam? So the key thing is this, when it comes to um, standardized exams, it really focuses on skills. Mm -hmm. And in doing the work in terms of the consistency of the classroom and allowing the students to do the work like the PBL focuses on, it actually builds upon those skills of critical reading, of being able to look and do a text analysis, being able to notice mm -hmm. and appreciate the nuances between questions. So at the end of the day, in my opinion, I feel as though the PBL does prepare the students for their state exams. Um, if I had my way, I would think that I wish that there were more that besides the state exam, students were also assessed in other, in other ways and other avenues as well. Because to me, that truly provides the student the ability to show what they really can do 
Um, and I think that in light of the um, unfortunate circumstances that we're currently in with um, the pandemic, I think that the PBL is preparing them and that I also feel is, is giving them the soft skills that they need that will be prepared, that will be, that they can infuse as they take the exam. Um, to just sit and prepare the students for exam is not really knowledge, it's more about a process. What we're trying to do, our main focus is to provide them with the ability to acquire knowledge and the ability to become life learners. And ultimately, that's why I think that will translate well for the exam. Because either way, when they sit and they struggle with a problem or a question, they'll be able to think about, how, what do I normally do when I have a problem before me? What are the steps I normally take when I need to find an answer and, and sift through you know, the distractions and get to the key component of what I'm trying to do? So these are the things that the project-based learning approach allows the students to develop organically that they will be able to support them. Thank you. Um, does anybody else have any questions? You, you brought them into silence. <laughs> I'm humbled by that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so don't get comfortable, Mr. Mazador, because we don't know if anybody from the audience is going to have a question. So at this time, we have reached the period for district residents, Island Park residents, and or employees of the district to address the board. This individual will be limited to three minutes of non-confidential agenda items with an overall maximum of 20 minutes if needed. Um, if you have a question, can you type in the chat box that you have a question and I will call on you um, by name and then you can unmute. <clears throat> As I'm choking. It's like quiet, but I always feel like it's on delay, so I don't want to just say, okay, we're moving on. All right, so as there's nobody typing in the chat box, I'm going to um, move on, and there is always another session at the end of the meeting. So at this time, I need a motion to move docket 0-201 through 0-206. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Excuse me. I need a motion to move dockets 0 207 through 0 216. So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. <clears throat> Excuse me, we have no old business, uh, new business. I need a motion to move dockets 0 217 through 0 226 to the February 2nd policy meeting. 0 217. Oh, I'm sorry. 0 217 through 0 225 to the February policy meeting. Thank you. Yeah. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. And a motion to move docket 0 226. So um, yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. We have um, for board privilege of the floor. Future meeting dates are on the agenda, but I'll just tell you them because there's only five. Um, Chestnut Street Parent University is at 6 p.m. on Monday, January 25th. I'm sure the information is on the website. Um, and then there's a PTA meeting to follow at 7.30, as Ms. Machia said earlier. Um, on February 2nd, we have a Board of Education policy meeting. On February 4th, there is a junior parent student guidance night. That always just sounds so weird to me, which I'm getting, again, assuming is going to be virtual. Um, Monday, February 8th is the PTSA meeting, and Tuesday, February 9th is our regular um, Board of Education meeting for the month of February. And everybody get ready because the month of March is coming and we're here every week. So with that being said, we have now reached the second portion for district residents, Island Park residents, and or employees of the board of the district to address the board. This individual will again be limited to three minutes of non confidential agenda items with an overall maximum of 20 minutes if needed. Um, to, again, if you have a question, um, 
just type in the chat box. I see yours, Barbara. Hold on one second. Um, I just want to let people type and then I'll call people in a second. Um, okay, Mrs. Hafner, you had a question. You're still you're still muted, Barbara. There you go. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I, um, I am a member of the Equity and Education Committee for the Long Island Veterans Council. And um, I, we just recently talked about the, um, the CRS or Cultural Response of Sustaining Education um, that was put out by the um, SED back in 2018. Are we participating in that? How are we rolling out that in that program. CRS stands for Cultural Responsive Sustaining Education. Mr. Raymond, do you want to answer? Uh, I don't know anything about it. What's that? I said, do you want to answer? Mrs. Tripp is way bigger. Wow. Mrs. <laughs> Tripp, do you have something you'd like to say? <laughs> <laughs> Are, are you going to say something? Yes, I was looking for the mute button. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, just to answer that question, if if I may, we actually started the rollout with the CRSE um, about, about two years ago. And the professional developer that we had been working with, Kelly Cordero, who is part of BOCES, she was actually doing that work with us in workshops and during um, superintendent's conference day, and it was ongoing um, as part of the ENL plan this year because no one was able to uh, come in for professional development. It is on pause right now, but we already started the work with the CRSE, and it would it was continuing with the rollout to the staff. That's great that you started in kindergarten. This goes. Oh, right I'm sorry, Barbara. No, um, I mean K to 12 in our school district in the West Hempstead School District, not at Chestnut Street. It was K to 12 initiative that came through uh, work with the ENL department. That's great. Um, any any other departments? Humanities? Anything? Math? Science? Wide. It was it was an initiative that started through the ENL department that was district wide. So the professional developer provided PDs after school as well. I know you're aware that every um, department also receives two hours of training in the ENL as part of the state mandates. And so the district offers that. So it was given out and provided to K to 12 district wide, all departments, all grade levels, everyone through our professional development program. Now, this, my understanding is the CRSC also incorporates the community and parents. Yep, it's a it's broken down into four different categories: administration, yes. teachers, students, and families. And so that we did get started on all of that work. So we've got, had parents and the community involved in this. Again, it got started. Okay. And then this year, cut off because of COVID. It's yeah. Work okay. Needs to Thank continue. you, Ms. Tripp. So, Barbara, it appears that this uh, project was started and put on hold due to COVID. And upon um, the ability to re restart this program, it will go out again to all those people. Great. Um, my other question has to do with. Um, uh, I actually sent an email to Mr. Uh, Joel Press regarding the um, tax liabilities on properties that have been now become tax exempt and how does that affect our community and our tax liabilities? Mr. Press. Um, so I reached out to uh, Nassau County. Uh, we, we had a, a lot of information about the different um, Properties. I was focusing on class four, a little bit on class three, um, you know, just to look at any changes that were made in assessed values or exemptions for those properties uh, that would uh, affect sort of the class four properties there. Um, and sort of, you know, summarization uh, the largest 
overall decrease or increase in the exemption uh, in that class four was for a, a New York state owned property. Um, yeah, it went up like the exemption increased uh, 52%. Uh, I'm trying to find out why. So I, I got the information. Uh, I've been trying to um, find some time to get more information from uh, the, the county. Um, so I'm still working on that. Uh, and then next in line there, there were uh, in terms of exemptions, um, single exemptions for a single property. Actually, that was the New York State. Um, the two next largest increases in exemptions in terms of groups, much, much, much smaller, um, were for um, overall religious based institutions, uh, which that increase was just under 50% of the total net increase in the exemptions, and then the town of Hempstead. Uh, so uh, I don't have the in information as, as to why. Uh, there were a few new exemptions that were put on. Wait, excuse me one second. Barbara, could you mute your mic for a sec? Just because we're getting feedback and I don't know if everybody can hear him. Thank you. She, she did it. Okay. Sorry. Um, so just into there were there were a few property. Well, I guess it's really one property that had. Uh, well, I guess actually no, it's two. The information they sent was a little off. Um, Hank got some new exemptions uh, where these on properties that they did not have exemptions for before. Um, wasn't significant in the overall scheme of the changes. I think that New York State property really skewed uh, things because their increase in their exemption was larger than the overall net increase because there were a lot of reductions in the exemptions for other properties. Um, so, uh, and then uh, the equestrian center over on Eagle Avenue did get a 20% increase uh, in their exemption. Uh, overall, it's only about 1.8% of the overall net increase, but um, their increase was fairly significant. So I will look into that to try to get some additional information that the county sent me the information. They were nice enough to do a comparison year to year to see what the changes were from 20 to 2020 um, fiscal year to the 2021 fiscal year. And so now I started doing a little bit more digging into the details. I'll have more information um, once I'm able to speak with the county. So I can provide that um, at the next meeting. Am I incorrect? I believe you also told me St. Thomas got an increase in the yeah. Yeah, not, so not overly significant, but right, right. Yeah, I mean, the single largest, you know, so religious um, institutions uh, on the whole were the second largest increase uh, in the net exemption. St. Thomas was the of the religious institutions, they were the largest, um, single largest religious institution to get an increase. So their increase was about 1.8% of the total increase, uh, and then Hank. Uh, with their, their increase was about 1.2% of the total increase. Uh, there were some reductions in the exemptions for other religious institutions, um, which is why if you add the two, I think in the St. Thomas together, uh, add up to more than the total net increase because they were offsetting decreases in exemptions for other religious institutions. It's kind of fascinating. I have spread feet. They were color coded. I couldn't get the print color. Not that. So, not that answers the question. Maybe. Um, okay. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Uh, I just wanted to add to that, if I may. Uh, um, I I did have a meeting with the uh, the county controller. Um, Jack Schnerman, who actually did an audit on uh, tax exemptions. He said that uh, it didn't get a lot of traction from Newsday. Um, however, um, if you'd like, I can give you the connection to the person that I spoke with in his office afterwards uh, regarding the uh, tax exemptions on properties. Sure, if you could email that, Barbara, we would appreciate it. I can do that. Thank you. Do we have any other questions from the audience at this time? Okay, so at this time, um, I'm going to need a motion from the board to move into executive session to discuss personnel and for advice of council. So moved. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us, and we will see you in February.
Right. Mm -hmm.